Okay, so hi, I'm Lizzie Laballastier from Going Coastal Blue, and I'm a Blue Health coach and Blue Health coach trainer. And I'm super, super excited to be joined by Justin, Dr. Justin Feinstein, uh, who is the president and director of the Float Research Collective, but also a clinical neuropsychologist specializing in addressing pain, um, anxiety, and stress. So loads of different, loads of different things in common that we have, but you're coming from a very clinical perspective, um, but a very different way of approaching clinically clinical therapy I think in terms of what you do so um I'm going to get you to introduce yourself in a moment and share loads about your work because your work really really interests me I first became interested in your work when I saw you speak at a blue mind summit and you were sharing some of the research that you've been doing around flotation and rest but you can share a bit more about what that is and some of the impact that I've been having on anxiety and one of the ways that for me one of the things that inspired me was it overlapped with quite a lot of things, actually. So firstly, recreationally, we'd floated when we'd been to Amsterdam and not in that dodgy way that, that, you, are suggest- that you might think. Uh, but we had gone floating when we were in Amsterdam many years ago, which I loved. And we have continued to float since. Uh, but also from a prof- professional perspective, uh, my focus is on alignment. So my focus is on aligning internally. So really dialing into interoception so that we can make wise decisions. And also externally, so really connecting with blue spaces, which, as you know, um, are much more, much more relaxing and less chaotic than some of the spaces that we might find ourselves in. So for those people that don't know about your work, can you share a little bit around the work that you have been doing and even more importantly, the work that you're coming up with in terms of where your work's going? It'd be so cool to hear about your latest developments, Justin. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Lizzie. I remember the Blue Mind Summit, and I I can't wait for the next one. It's been a while, and I, I I tell Jay every time I talk to him, "When's the next Blue Mind Summit?" But it was it was great, and you know the um, the Float Research Collective that you mentioned is the new nonprofit that I started about two years ago, and really the goal of the Float Research Collective is to really systematically and scientifically study flotation therapy and try to get it approved as a medical treatment so it's more accessible to the millions of people who stand to benefit. And right now, you know, we have a lot of research that's come out over the past five or so years, really showing the therapeutic value of flotation therapy. Um, As you alluded to, the, the, the main area of study that I've really focused on is patients with stress and anxiety related disorders. And we're finding this almost immediate or reflexive reset of their nervous system when they're in this flotation environment. And to me, you know, what's always been so fascinating is the water is such a critical piece to this equation. We've done now several different studies with uh, various control conditions that don't have the full immersion in water. And the key ingredient once again, seems to be the immersion in water. So there's something very fascinating about this work. Um, Over the past five or six years, as we've been studying it, we've been trying to not just study it subjectively in terms of how it makes people feel, but really objectively in terms of how it's impacting their cardiovascular system and their nervous system. And that's really what's fascinating to me is that the objective data is really showing what Jay has referred to as the blue mind state. You know, this slowing of respiration, this lowering of blood pressure, this complete relaxation of all tension throughout the nervous system, both in, you know, the muscles per se, but also in the mind. You know, that's what's fascinating. We, we actually haven't published this data yet, but we're working on it right now. We've, we've been able to measure brain waves while people are floating. And it's quite fascinating what the float environment does to the slowing of people's brain waves. And I think this is really speaking to what's happening in our society right now, where the average ordinary person is just being inundated by stimulation, and their nervous system is struggling to disconnect, right? We're kind of always in this fight or flight mode. And really what water does is it provides an immediate break from that day-to-day stimulation. 
And it allows our nervous system to get back to what I call a state of homeostasis, how we are meant to be, the state of balance that we're kind of missing in our day-to-day -day lives. So that's what's been exciting for me is to see the research bear out this finding and really show and highlight the importance for your own health of entering into a state of blue mind. Super cool. And you and you mentioned because breath, I'm really interested in breath work and heart rate variability and actually how that impacts our, us getting into that state of coherence. So have you measured have you measured much around breath or have you got that information from what's going on with the circulatory system? We have. So we uh, at the end of last year, we had our first publication on both heart rate variability and respiratory rate. And the findings, you know, were quite interesting. The, the, the heart rate variability findings did show a significant increase in what, what's known as high frequency HRV, which is really more or less the engagement of the parasympathetic branch. So we, we did find that. And we also showed a slowing of respiration. Now, keep in mind, we did not instruct people to slow their breathing. This was sort of naturally induced by the float environment on the order of about one or so breaths per minute slower. And this may not seem like a lot, but they've done a similar study in very long-term meditators, people who've practiced over 10,000 hours of meditation. And without guiding them at all to slow their breathing, just their natural baseline breathing rate, it was about a breath or so minute slower uh, uh, per minute. So, you know, the, the idea of just lowering your respiration just by a little bit could actually go quite a long ways. So maybe in the future, when um, when we're talking about increasing vagal tone, they won't just say do some yoga and start singing. Maybe flotation will be will be one of the big, one of the first things to be recommended. That's right. And and you know what's would be very interesting from from my perspective is to look at other types of aqueous environments. You know, maybe floating is in in some ways a very extreme form of a blue mind state. But we could also do the similar studies in people who say who are swimming or sailing on a boat, or just gazing out at the horizon overlooking the ocean. So there's a lot of different ways that water, in terms of immersion, but also just sort of as part and parcel of your life, just seeing water even, could have beneficial effects. Super cool. So I love, I really love your vision. Can you share your vision, what your vision is for the Float Research, Research Collective? Yeah, so you know, my my hope with this endeavor is to have a non-pharmacological route towards reducing these sort of ubiquitous forms of human suffering, whether it be pain, stress, or anxiety. These are conditions and symptoms that all of us face on a day-to-day -day basis. And if there's non-pharmacological routes that are non-addictive and safe, this should really be what the medical system is promoting, right? This should be our first primary route towards treating these conditions. And so the idea of the Float Research Collective is to actually gather the data, gather the clinical trials that will be necessary to convince the powers that be in the field of medicine that this is a viable therapy, this is a safe therapy, and most importantly, it's an effective therapy. So we've shown this now in several different clinical trials. We've replicated this result several times now. And one of the goals of the nonprofit is to go head to head against the Goliath of big pharma. We really wanna show that flotation therapy is as effective as some of these so-called gold standard medications like benzodiazepines for anxiety reduction or opioids for pain reduction and do it in a very systematic way and show that not only does it reduce pain and anxiety as effectively as these highly addictive medications, but it doesn't come with this host of side effects. You know, to me, this is what's missing right now. You go to a doctor, you complain to the doctor that you're suffering from pain or anxiety or stress, and more often than not, you come home with a prescription for one of these highly addictive pills. This has to change, you know, this whole idea that you could just medicate away suffering, that has to change. So really, you know, what the Float Research Collective is doing is we're trying to actually change the whole medical system and how they're treating these ubiquitous conditions. 
And to me, this is a lifelong endeavor. This is not going to be a sprint. This is going to be a marathon. And it's going to take the collective power of all the people who recognize this fact to help us get to the finish line. Well, Jay uses the term unstoppable. So that's what you need to be. You need to be uh, you need to be unstoppable. And I love I love that you're giving huge credibility to water as medicine through this that's research. Right. And that fact, the fact that you've proven that the, the the long the long that flotation has a longer term effect than just popping a pill. I mean, that's, that's right. That's amazing. That's that's amazing to have that data and to continue to get more and more data to prove that case. It's, yeah. In fact, you know, we just published that um, last month. It came out in in um, a very good journal. And it basically showed that the effects of floating, whether it's the anti-anxiety effects of floating or the antidepressant effects of floating, persevere for over 48 hours. You know, that's really incredible that you could go in for, say, a one hour session and two days later still be feeling these effects. And when you compare that, say, to an opioid or a benzodiazepine, those last maybe four hours or eight hours. And then suddenly you start seeing the reemergence of pain and anxiety. So we're beating these pills by a whole, whole order of magnitude, you know, four to eight hours for the pills, 48 hours or longer for the float sessions. You know, this is really fascinating to me because it, it shows you the power of the intervention. And keep in mind, all the intervention is of float therapy is just literally lying down on a bed of water that's been hypersaturated with Epsom salt. That's it. It's a very simple therapy. It doesn't require you to do anything. The environment actually does all the work for you. And so the fact that we're seeing these effects over two days later, to me, is so important because it actually shows there's a residue that water carries forward into your life. So it's not just the act of getting in water, it's that whole residue afterwards that helps shape your experience and actually help you re-engage with day-to-day -day life. I think, you know, so much of us have forgotten this evolutionary benefit of water. It's, it's missing from our day-to-day -day lives. And, you know, my hope is as the research comes out, people will realize this needs to be a regular practice that we introduce into our lives. We can't, we can't ignore it anymore. And what, one of the things that I loved as well that was groundbreaking that was that you designed a float tank that was open, that was open, and that's you know, to take away all the barriers to floating for people. I think that's really amazing, Spe specifically because of the population that you're working with in terms of what you're targeting. And that's yeah, that's revolutionary. Actually, making it making it really accessible. So that's right. You know, I think that for many years, you know, floating has been around now for almost a half a century in its modern day iteration. And for many of those years, you know, the typical float tank was quite small and enclosed, and it created a barrier to entry. A lot of my patients would never even consider getting into a small enclosed space. So essentially what we did is we created these beautiful circular wide open float pools, and there's no barrier to entry at that point. It's just this giant pool, and then the room built around the pool is soundproof and lightproof and temperature and humidity controlled. And so when you go into the room, you don't feel claustrophobic at all. It's just this wide open space. And I think that's really important. And it sort of tries to get closer to what you might experience out in real nature, say when you're in an ocean, which is really infinite, right? You could look out on the horizon and it just goes on forever. So, you know, to me, this is important because the idea of water is you wanna create and open up this infinite space, right? It's, it, it's a way to allow the mind to, to sort of free itself, if you will. And a lot of people report that when they're in a float environment is this spontaneous sort of induction of creativity and allowing thoughts to just expand. You know, this is really important. So much of our day-to-day our -day life is in this very confined space where we're sort of in an office, maybe without even windows. We're not exposed to nature. We're not exposed to this sort of freeing element. And so water in many ways is, is the essence of that freeing element. And we need it. We need it in our lives. And I think it's missing in so many people's lives. So I think so much of what you've done, Lizzie, and the Blue Mind movement has done is it's opened people's eyes to this very basic point that we're missing, right? 
Yeah, and and I think flotation. I don't know. I think it might have been you that said because it's it's a definitely a quote that stuck with me, and it probably did come from you. But it's definitely a sensation I have when I float, which is you don't know where you end and the world begins, and it's That's that right. from a from a connection. If blue mind, if the blue mind collective or blue mind groundswell is all about fostering that connection with water, and yeah, and there's such synergy in terms of you you wanting to make this 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 therapy. Um, the the gold standard and and what you'd get what your go to is and the blue mind aim is to make blue mind common knowledge there's such alignment there in terms of actually that everybody needs to be aware of this and and again there's that alignment around particularly those people that need it most and that comes through so strongly in your work the fact that those people that need it most are you know the people that probably couldn't have, wouldn't have accessed it and the impact that has is exponential isn't it? it's huge huge impact on those people that need it most yeah, you know, that that's really what gets me excited about this is there, there's, you know, millions and probably billions of people really who stand to benefit from this. You know, I think uh, they said at the end of last year, the world's population just surpassed 8 billion people, right? And I would venture to guess that about 7.99 billion of those people have never heard of float therapy nor have ever tried it, right? So we have a lot of work to do. I think there is an information uh, gap here, if you will, that a lot of people are not receiving this information or don't even understand it or haven't learned about it. And so it's really up to us to try to educate the world and make them realize that there are these very holistic interventions that don't require anything other than just immersing yourself in water that could really provide a, a strong benefit, not just for your mental health, but your physical health too. And this is something that I think we need to sort of bring out the megaphones, if you will, and shout it out to the world at the top of our lungs because the data is bearing it out. And these were really well-controlled studies that is showing this. So to me, it's it, we've now reached a point from say, when I presented at the Blue Mind Conference five or six years ago, to now having all these publications out and really demonstrating with concrete scientific evidence that this is actually a reliable and effective form of therapy. That's what's so exciting to me is now we actually have data to stand on and really prove that this idea of a blue mind is going to resonate not just with a few people, but very broadly across the whole population. That that. You know, that's something pretty rare in life when you find an intervention that could actually help so many different types of people of all shades of color, of all different types of ethnicity. It's a really universal state, this idea of blue mind. I believe that. And so that's the idea is how to sort of transcend the barriers that we've created in our world and make humans, all humans realize that this is a really important part of their day-to-day -day life that they need to start integrating. Well, that was going to be one of my questions for you was going to be, how, how can we help? How can people help? It's, it is that it's sharing, isn't it? And pretty much every coaching client of mine, one of the recommendations is go and float. Go, go, go. If you haven't, if you haven't tried floating, then, then you need to go and do that. And re I mean, even rest, re was it reduced environmental stimulation therapy? That's, that's a, a, it's a beautiful acronym and it works hundred percent. And it, when it also aligns with blue mind, it also aligns with, you know, if you, if you think about blue spaces, that they are, there is less stimulation in those blue spaces, whether it's a flotation tank or whether it's going out into wild water spaces, there is, there is that dialing down of the chaos. It's just not as extreme as being in a float tank when, when you're really getting the opportunity to simply be with yourself. <laughs> That's right. And, and I think that's a, a, a great reminder, you know, so float centers, that offer this are now popping up all over the world. There's over a thousand different places that they've sort of figured out are offering this therapy on a day-to-day -day basis. But on top of that, if you don't have access to a, a float center nearby, or if you can't afford it, go into blue spaces, whether it be lakes or rivers or pools or oceans. You know, I live near an ocean now. It's amazing just going into the water for even five or 10 minutes, what it could do to your, your, your state of being. And I think people don't recognize this. A lot of people don't have access to water even. And so I think it's incumbent upon us to make this more accessible. You know, if it was up to me, 
I would like to see float centers on every city corner, on every city block. You know, these should be everywhere. Government should be subsidizing it. I think it should be free of charge. You know, insurance companies or, 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 or medical uh, um, providers should be just providing this as part and parcel of living in this modern day crazy world that we live in. Well, I celebrate you for going after the pharmaceutical companies 100%. Yeah. 100%. So there's one more quote that I want to share, which which is from your TEDx, which I in 2020, which if anybody watching this, do do look at that TEDx. It gives a bit more information about some of the research that you've been doing and look at the and look at your website, which is the Float Research Collective. So um, that would be a really good way of, of staying connected. But it's basically you, you said our brain and our mental health is a byproduct of the environment in which you exist. And for me, that's really inspiring because that for me links back to the people protect what they love because yes it is in the context that it's shared it's it's about recognizing that the environment's chaotic and, and we can dial that down and for me also it's that piece around we create that environment so therefore we want to protect it and actually want to make sure that it is an environment that looks after us so it's that whole for me I love that quote because it's got that whole 360 piece around being part of the environment that we inhabit so, that's, so. That's, so, that's so important, you know, and a lot of people miss that in my TED talk. It was the last line of the, the, the entire presentation. But I think it really was the most important line because essentially the patients that we worked with in the studies I, I, I spoke about were patients who had chronic stress and chronic anxiety. Some of the patients I, I had in my study had been suffering pretty much their entire life, as far back as they could remember, all the way through childhood, okay? So these are people who really were struggling. They were trying different types of treatments, trying different types of drugs and medications, and nothing was really working. And I, all I did is I just put them into this float environment for one hour. That is it. I didn't do anything special. There was no sort of added psychotherapy or any sort of additional element. It was just the float environment for one hour. And all of the patients we have studied suddenly had this reset. You know, to me, that showed me that it's not just happening in the brain. So many people who suffer from, say, anxiety think it's all in their head, right? They think it's a problem internal to them. But in fact, what it suggested to me is it's more likely a problem external to their environment. And if you could shift that environmental state by, you know, say, putting someone in a float environment or just going into, say, a blue space even, suddenly you could shift somebody's state of mind. You know, that's very powerful that we could just do that through simple environmental shifts this is something medicine has totally ignored, right? This is too easy. It's not profitable, right? You could just well, ask somebody to go into one of these blue spaces and shift their state of mind. You know, that's really powerful uh, medicine right there. And so this is the part I think that is missing right now in our medical system is they're, they're not recognizing that these environmental shifts could have actually profound effects on the nervous system. And that's really what I've been trying to show with the, the research we've conducted is, is these aren't just subtle shifts. They're actually quite profound. And that for me is fascinating from a multiple braining point of view in terms of the nerve, the distributed mind, the nervous system in terms of the heart, head and gut. I think that's really fascinating because actually that whole relaxation of everything down your spine and, and like, and so I'm sure like you you got to focus on something but i'm sure in years and years to come there'll be focus on well what's happening in the gut what's happening in the what what's happening in the, in the wider brain in the wider mind so um yes. yeah huge, hugely hugely powerful stuff so um that was super interesting and i know that i said i was going to keep you shorter amount of time but i really loved listening to you, so i kept asking questions so here's to the important the really important part of this conversation which is the blue mind award which you already know that you are the recipient of the seventh annual well annual in inverted commas blue mind award which is a global award for for championing blue mind uh, we were hugely lucky to receive this award and massively humbled to receive this award in 2018 and since then obviously we've had covid and we've had fires and we've had all sorts of change and upheaval in the world so this award has been in my home and I've been I've been enjoying having this award for well over my amount of time my allotted amount of time and we felt Jay and I were chatting about 
uh, who would be the most amazing person to give this to next and we're standing on the, we're definitely standing on the shoulders of giants because um, because it came to me by Jim Ritterhoff from Force Blue and you know about their amazing their amazing work and, and Carbondale won it for that but won it previously or received this award previously for opening their splash park giving open access to everybody in their community to walk to water and there's been previous recipients prior but this is coming to you and it's coming to you I'm going to send this on World Blue Mind Day. look at how beautiful this is oh. World Blue Mind Award and had I been coming over to the States I would have loved to give this to you first it's like a virtual pass of a very big blue marble um, and whilst it's a beautiful thing um, I think it's more about the message that it sends uh, which is a huge ma- message of gratitude for all the work that you're doing around making blue mind common knowledge um which is a which is a byproduct of all the work that you're doing around championing float therapy and rest therapy and um and yeah the question is how do you feel receiving the the award is this your little recept your little reception um speech because when i received it, it was a total surprise and i had no opportunity to, to say anything coherent whatsoever so um it's great that you already knew this is coming to you so um this is from Jay and this is from the whole Blue Mind groundswell because it's it's a groundswell. It's about it's about all of us and what we can all do. So um, congratulations on being the seventh award winner for the Blue Mind. Well, you might want to start thinking about who you think might be the next person that it rolls on to. We thought we'd do it on World Blue Mind Day, which um, which gives us a, which gives us a good date to to kind of work with in terms of keeping this rolling. But um, massive congratulations. And um over to you to share anything else that you want to share around around um, receiving this award. Well, th- thank you so much, Lizzie, and and thank you to Jay and and the whole Blue Mind community. It it really is an honor to receive this award. You know, I've always felt that the Blue Mind state is a real phenomenon, not just something that was made up, but actually is something neurophysiologically happening in our bodies and our nervous system. And we now actually have data to support this idea, right? That's what's so exciting about this award is in some ways is a testament to the fact that there now is real physiological proof of this so-called blue mind state. And I I take this award uh, very humbly, like you said, standing on the shoulder of giants, people who have been spending their entire life trying to understand this concept study this concept, disseminate this concept. And it's going to take the groundswell of this community to keep it going. We're still a niche, if you will. I I think there's still a lot of people not aware of this. And, you know, my my goal with this award is to continue that that journey, continue that uh, long, long long-term marathon, if you will, of trying to get this message out to the broader world and, and really the medical community. So, so thank you so much. I, I'm really appreciative of it. And anybody who was interested in learning more about our research and what we're doing, feel free to go to our website, clinicalfloat.org, or follow us on any of the social media platforms at Float Research, and you could stay up to date on all the things that we're trying to do. Well, I'm massively appreciative of, um, of you having this long conversation with me. And congratulations. And I'm going to stop recording this now so that we can share it on World Blue Mind Day and then we'll we'll sign off. So um, thank you so much, Justin, and congratulations. Thank you, Lizzie.